That's the sound of the police. Yeah. All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Faded True. Today, I got interview one of Bully, The Dead Don't Die. I have Jose Eduardo Ramos. Bully's set to come out fall of this year, correct? Hopefully, yeah. With everything that's going on, Alex, our director, writer, has been working hard, hard right now in post. So we're looking for hopefully a, a full release in one of those platforms. We got Netflix, Amazon Prime, Roku. All, all that good stuff. So if you have a fire stick, you should be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen. Santos. Santos. Boys look so serious. I own a titty bar. We got wings. We got pussy. We got drinks. You like wings? Who likes some wings, man? We got great wings. Who likes some titties? Come on, bro. Some titties. Santos, let's cut the pleasantries and get down to business. We need to talk about an increase in distribution. No business, huh, Rico? Gentlemen, this is a very profitable business. And you made me a lot of money, of which I'm sure you're aware of. But I have to inquire. Why such an urgency to expand when the word on the street is You've been having issues with the pigs. It's so serious. <laughs> you know, it's so weird. It, like, it's always so weird to kind of just see myself on screen or on TV or whatever it is, you know. But I remember that clip. That that was actually the first scene that we shot. For the drug lord, correct? I'm, I'm a businessman. That's what I am. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no drug lord. Good, I'm a good way of putting man. it. I conduct, I conduct <laughs> business, you know. I'm a businessman. And right now they've been moving merchandise for me. We've been conducting business. And so we're having a meeting and right now they want to ante the level. They, they want more, they want more at stake. They want to push more. And, and for me, it's, you know, I think when you're a businessman, you, you want to make sure that whoever you're dealing with is cool. So, I mean, that's, that's that sort of cat and mouse. I mean, they're making me a lot of money, these guys, <laughs> but I just have to make, you know, I can't make it easy for them. It ends where they're, they're going to come back to me. You know, we'll, we'll figure okay. it out, take care of your business. And, and when you take care of your business, just come back to me and work something out. Let's talk about your role in Bully. My character's name is Santos. I'm a restaurant owner. That's my front, strip place, restaurant owner. And I take care of my side business or my, where I make the real money is moving merchandise around. They're undercover cops. They're in deep. I don't know that, but I do know right now that I'm getting some sort of heat. So I'm I need this heat off of me. So that's kind of where we're at right now at that point in the story. So in that scene that we just saw, you have no idea that they're undercovers yet? Absolutely not. Okay. And will you find Absolutely this out not. later? Is, oh, yeah. is that too much to talk about? Okay. I don't know. I probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> well, listen, it, it, this is the clip that you're showing. There's another clip where it's pretty obvious that I find out what they're up to. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> How long did it take you to actually shoot the movie Bully? We shot that. And then God, six months later, I came back. I shot the uh, another scene. Uh, so it was just really spaced out. It, it took a few months, maybe even close to a year from one wow. scene to the other because he continued to bring different characters in and everything kind of just continues to grow and grow and grow and grow and now it's turned into something which is cool really really big is there a specific actor in the movie that you are always with or that you had like a special like connection with or anything like that and i had the guys around me in this scene there's there's uh like my my heavy my bodyguards and stuff right. um Everybody on set was cool. All my scenes were with Alex, with the, the two main characters around me, which is Rico and Valentine. So I got to, to really just play with them. So okay. Cool, you know, which, which is kind of cool. When you're shooting different stuff, you, you're, there's actors on the set, you're meeting a lot of people. Uh, when, when I shot the other clip, that's a little, it's completely different. You know, I play a tough guy. He had some real, holy shit, these guys. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, I don't want to. Like these are the real dudes. Like you know, I wouldn't mess with you if I saw you walking in the street. I'm just playing here. But he had some real deal guys, and what that does, the cool thing about that, it it just um, you're hanging out with them there. You, it helps to build that world around you, so it makes it easier to kind of just play with. Did you grow up in New York? I grew up Upper West Side, which is not like the Upper West Side that it is now. 
Yeah, it sounds fancy. It was, more, <laughs> it was no, no, no. It was very diverse back then. And then my mom took us to Spanish Harlem. It was cool, but it was completely different, you know? So when did you first start getting into acting? I played around here and there as a kid. High school did, did a few things. The first time I really shot anything, I dated a girl who was a singer. Freestyle day. I bartended. I worked in clubs and stuff like that back then. So I dated a girl and... and uh, so she asked me to be in one of her videos, so I shot the video. So just shooting that whole process, I'm like, man, this is pretty cool. This is fun. Um, and then when you work in clubs and restaurants, you're working with other actors. And so that was kind of like the first introduction to it. Um, so your first role couple. was in the, in the video? Yeah. And then uh, what, where did you go from there? Did you go to like acting school or did you just kind of so go then, to auditions? Because New York obviously has auditions um, everywhere, so yeah new york was crazy i think when you're young it, it was fun now i know the level of work that it takes to and and dedication and commitment if you really want to develop your talent and not rely on on anything else so once i realized that that's kind of what i wanted to try out and do then i jumped into uh i got more serious about the classes and then you know just from there just dabbled uh, you know plays and did some soap opera stuff and it, you know i started with student films independent films um so i started from there so i mean it's it's been a, a little while i know you were in see we have convicted yeah what it was and true drama those are the three movies i saw that you were in as well true drama is right now in post we just actually we shot something um what does that mean in post post really means is like all right the movie shot most of it is shot let me just piece it together sound color you know editing and and then make one complete movie and send it out to test audiences and see what what happens from there so the movies those three movies that you were in prior are they anything like was your role anything like it is in bully nah true drama which hasn't come out i play a cop i'm really just uh, with the main character she works under me and we're out to kind of just get like this slasher this killer convicted right now convicted is on amazon prime uh that was fun uh i played the brother of the lead character who at the beginning of the movie i'm picking him up from jail he did 10 years and now he's come to stay with me his daughter's grown up but you find something out about my character i basically kind of betrayed him and he's in jail because of me um and there's a whole twist to it it's pretty cool i mean it was a good cast it was fun i shot a short it just came out called revolver which was pretty cool i played wanted to retire hitman and i kind of just got brought brought back into the game i played uh against victor cruz that was fun so i get to play with guns and shoot and run around and i do feel all like this yeah i feel stuff. like you're all your characters are like a badass though is that <laughs> <laughs> Uh, We're like I mean, a listen, it, how do you get these badass <laughs> roles? <laughs> so when you walk into a room that people see, you know, or when they look at your headshot, they see that's kind of just you, you walk in, they see a serious looking guy or something, a uh, cop this or, or that. Or the guy cast for actually that's something that still we haven't shot yet based on the DC comic book, 100 Bullets. That's something that I'm looking forward to. But until you're out there shooting it or filming it, it's not done, you know, right. it's just it's all talk. So we'll, we'll see. What would you say is the biggest difference from like your characters um, that you play and then you in real life? You're bringing a part of yourself to whatever it is that you do. So, and that's what I'm realizing. It's, it's whatever it is that I, that I do, I'm, I'm bringing myself and what are 
under what circumstances would I do this? We all have a different side of us. Under the right circumstances, if something happens, you know, whether it is, whether it's good or bad, you're going to react if the motivation is there. So, you know, the biggest difference is I'm usually really positive and just kind of, uh, I like to have fun <laughs> in real life. You know, I mean, I, I take care of my, my business because of the job that I do. I have a family, a kid that I, I have to kind of just set an example for. Right. You know, so, and so you're but, in these movie, like movies and you're all serious and like <laughs> talking about bitches and everything. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like sometimes you're, we're doing it. And then like afterwards you, you know, you, you sit there and you're cracking up. I'm like, what the, what the did I just say that or do that? You know, you're shooting a, you're shooting a gun or you're doing something and you just, you know, something stupid happened and you laugh. I'm a little more chilled. <laughs> and 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 I like and to have church. fun. <laughs> yeah, I listen. Well, as I tried, I mean, why why not? You listen, every day that I get up is 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 a blessing. It's an opportunity for me to oh, yeah. go out and and do something. So why not? We all have our challenges, but we're here. So it's about how you react to those challenges, though. That's what I've learned. Yeah. You control. Yeah. You react to everything. So if you control, if you act in a positive way and that's how you react, then your mind will still kind of keep going. But if you react negative, then it kind of snow piles on top and you can't get anything done. It's, you know, you gotta be productive. You got shit to do. Shit's gonna happen no matter what. It's just how, how you respond. What would you say is the biggest obstacle that you faced in the like acting industry so far? I think myself, I think, I think it's really just up to us. You know, I mean, wow. obstacles are gonna be there. My job is to go out and how do I prepare to do my best, my, the best work? What do I have control over? Sending to that voice in your head, you know, that's not serving your preparation and how you uh, step into the room, you know, to, to audition really. Yeah. Cause or, you have to do your best work. Set, your, set yourself apart from all these like hundreds and thousands of other people when you go for these roles. Right. Yeah. And I, and I think trusting that you doing your work, I wish I would have known this before. How do you set yourself apart? Just be yourself. Just bring yourself to it. Don't try to please whoever it is in front of you. A lot of times I didn't approach it that way. So now more and more, I'm like, shit, this is who I am. This is what I'm going to do. And if you like it, you do. If not, I'm going to try to tell the truth as much as possible and serve the story. And, and, and that's it. The other stuff I can't control. I can't control what people think about what I look like, what I sound like, my work, whatever. I'm not going to give my power away as far as that. Before you get on set, some people, do they pray or do they like say something? Preparation or process. Yeah. I, I <laughs> like to you know, probably bang a couple of shots of like tequila. Really? No, I'm, yeah, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I was like, okay, I can do, get with that. <laughs> nah, every situation calls for something different. And that's something that I'm constantly finding, finding out within myself. The one thing that I try to do is uh, I definitely try to be prepared as far as knowing what I'm, what specifically I'm working on that day you know just try to relax meditate just kind of chill that day not not right before i go in just just try to relax so i do some vocal warm-ups is um, there things to do to make you look better on camera like to make you look skinnier or like your skin better anything because i feel like the camera <laughs> adds like 10 pounds to me I, so. I, I, <laughs> lot, maybe lots of makeup <laughs> just wash yourself out <laughs> i have trouble looking at myself that's another thing i have trouble I'm like, shit do i really look like that like <laughs> doing like self tapes because a lot of it now especially with self tapes was was big before now with this going on there's a lot of self tapes so having to for example i have this ipad right here right now i have some lighting so just having to work the camera, there are definitely camera angles that do help. How long have you been a firefighter for? I'm actually a captain in the fire service uh, in my 19 years. Wow. It goes by freaking fast. How often is it that you have to go on a call? I mean, we're pretty busy. So, I mean, not all calls are fires. We had a car fire. A lot of the stuff that we go to are, are alarm, alarm malfunctions. If somebody's cooking, the alarm goes off. CO detectors, order of natural gas, order of like smoke, like water. We, we, you know, I'm up one o'clock in the morning. I'm last night. I'm, I'm by a house and there's sewer water coming up. Anything that's an emergency, they're calling us to respond. 
people getting locked out. Never people for, 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 for they, It's <laughs> happened. There was a litter of cats stuck like they were doing some work under the concrete. We had to break the concrete. Boat emergencies, car accidents. See a lot of things that the average person doesn't see, kind of, in your in your put in, in situations, especially now where I have to, I'm thinking of like, okay, how do we do this? How do we do this? I need you here. I need you there. And so it's, it's a cool challenge. You definitely learn a, a little bit about yourself in that process. What's your top three um, safety tips for not starting a fire? <laughs> I know that I'm not, I know I'm not supposed to put my hand out on my <laughs> burner, like no, nothing on top of the no, burners. I have pilot no, the fire in the stove. And people, and this usually happens, like, it'll happen near the holidays a lot, or they'll leave their Tupperware inside there. I don't keep anything inside the oven or anywhere or on top that that's not meant for us to cook on. Um, extension cords, since the National Lampoon's vacation with, like, all the stuff plugged in. I think the biggest thing that will save your life is a smoke detector. People, they cook, and it goes off, so they take it down um, 100% of the time for me that I've been into a house where somebody didn't make it, it's because they didn't have a smoke detector. Upcoming actors or people that maybe are just kind of discouraged in their acting career, if it's not excelling fast enough or whatever, what would be your best advice to them? I mean, if you do it, just go all in, go all in, give it a hundred percent and, and trust that, trust that you are enough. If you put the work in, you are enough. Um, I also think, that for me, even now at this point, because I took a, a break from the business and I realized I'm like, I love doing this. I enjoy it. For me, it's not, it doesn't matter whether I'm famous or whatever. It just matters. I just love doing it. So whatever capacity it is that, that, that you want to do it, just you can do it theater. You can, you can do anything you want to do if this is something you love doing. And I think over the course of time, if you commit yourself to doing it uh, and you have fun, uh, you're going to grow, you're going to get better, and people are going to recognize that, and opportunities will come. But it's, it's a journey. It's like life. It's a journey. It's some people, right. it may happen for you sooner, but work on your, uh, just continue to work on your craft. A role that you've turned down ever in your career? Have you taken every role that was given to you? Last summer, there was something that, that I kind of wanted to do, and it just didn't fit in. The balance, real life, work, family, and acting. Absolutely. I have no social life, <laughs> but, but you know what? I don't, I'm, um, I enjoyed myself when I was, when I was younger. So I'm cool. So right now I'm like, like, I just, you know, I love what I do as far as a firehouse. I, my family time is important and I, I love doing this. So those are the three major things that I give myself to, you know, right. this is, oh, that's, I stay within that bubble. If I try to do too much, then everything gets kind of watered down a little bit. Yeah, you can't put your main focus on, you know, 10 things. It's like you have to pick your ones you're going to prioritize and and just focus on that because it's hard enough doing one job, let alone three, you know? So well, I, I've I mean, been look there. At, look, look at what you're doing now. I mean, you have a full-time job and then you, you're, I mean, you're building something now. So you're in that process where now it's like you're, the hustle is never going to stop, but now... Right. <laughs> at one point in the future, your full hustle is going to be what you want to do and then expanding on to something greater. You know, our greatest resource is time because you never get that back. Who's your favorite actor? I came from an age with, with De Niro and Pacino. You know, I like different things about different actors. Like Christian Bale, I like the way Christian Bale kind of just transforms himself from one character to another kind of, you know, like Robert Downey Jr., Christopher Waltz. They're, they're very crazy relaxed crazy relaxed they just kind of like they just like roll kind of um like an effortless acting it's just yeah it's, and i mean being latino there's there's guys that like bobby Cannavale. like i like what he's done but his career kind of just you know doing broadway and and films and tv and just well-rounded i'm like and he's grown so much i mean he's he's really good I like what he's done with his career. He kind of just takes care of his business and and uh, and does his thing and just works. Is there anybody that question. you want to work with, like that you hope to one day uh, work? With? Meryl Streep, Viola Davis, uh, Denzel Washington, any one of those guys to to be in that space with. I mean, the, they're powerhouses. So when you're not doing 
acting or firefighting. What's your favorite thing to do? <laughs> I, I like your pool sign, by the way. It's like in your yard. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I like that. Wife, uh, give her all the credit for that. I coach my son's baseball team. You know, it's part of my family time. But really, the the three I love to read. I love to work out. Those are things that I do every every single day. It just to kind of keep me uh, sane <laughs> in in line in some way. Yeah, that you know what? That's like me time. And then I try to meditate. That's me time. Those those are that, those are things that are like I don't. You know, I, I wish I could watch more TV and more movies just because I love I love that as well. But these other components I feel are more important to my overall happiness right now. Right. I'm excited to see you in the movie now that I talk to you because just watching <laughs> the clip and not knowing, you know, you would, you know, maybe think you're a little more of a badass than you think you are. But you're saying <laughs> I'm not a badass? <laughs> think you give yourself credit. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but it's crazy to interview you before I see the movie, you know, because it's like, it's not out yet. So, everyone that I talk to, it's going to be like meeting them and then watching their role, which is kind of backwards. And I'm excited about it. I think, you know what, that's a great perspective because sometimes I work with, with people and we're not in the same scenes, but we're hanging out, we're talking, you see the script, but then when you, you get to know someone or, or communicate with them, and then you see also the narrative of the story, it's just like, Oh shit, this is a cool element to that. You know? But it's cool because now I'm going to learn the story like piece by piece from everyone. And then I'm going to be able to watch it as a whole together. So I'm excited. I'm excited for the journey. Alex, the hustle, he's, the, you know, producing, directing, writing. I mean, and and he had this vision and he just brought everybody together. Now he's, it's a tremendous amount of work, tremendous amount of work. But nothing comes, nothing great, I think, over the course of, it takes time. And, and it doesn't come without work. It, so I'm excited. I mean, I've seen this thing now turning into something um, bigger than what I first stepped into it. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It should, be, it should be pretty cool. Bully brought us here together and it's going to bring all these people to use. We're in a creative business and uh, creating content and entertaining people and, and hopefully enlightening. Hopefully people look at this and, and there's some sort of, and in your interviews and are entertained and, and also find hope and, and a little part of themselves in, in, in these interviews that you have and, and, um, and it pushes them or, or gives them that little nudge to follow their dreams as well. Yeah, good, that was well put. So, <laughs> <laughs> Was that scripted? <laughs> what? You got your script right behind your, <laughs> your iPad. No, no, it, it, <laughs> although, you know what? I have done that for self-tapes. Oh, I can't remember this line. I'll just write it out and put it like there and just those little tricks. Editing can either make or break a movie or piece or document, whatever. There are times where I've shot films and I'm like, fuck, why did, he, why did they use that take? That sucked. Why didn't right. they use another take? You know, I'm like sitting there, I'm like, Shh. I cannot wait to see you in Bully, The Dead Don't Die, releasing hopefully in 2020. Uh, we will look for you. I'm excited to see your character now that I know as the businessman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for having me. The black is hot. 400 degrees. Check the temperature. Respect is what we need.